Happy second Sunday of Easter, dear ones. I pray that you are able to celebrate Easter in meaningful ways and that this season is surprisingly good, filled with wonder and awe and the peaceful and pensive presence of Jesus' spirit here with us. Uh, again, I have some familiar items from church. I have our earth ball. I have our friendly peg. We can put our coins in. And since I'm in my daughter Callahan's room, she's away um, at school still, I brought one of my favorite animals of hers, this friendly tiger. Of course, I also have a storybook. Today's story is called Truman. And Truman is a book written by Jean Wrighty. And it's the perfect children's storybook for the second week of Easter, especially this year. I know that some of you have pets, maybe even a tortoise like Truman. Did you know that pet therapy is a real thing? And that cuddling with a cat or dog, watching a fish swim, even listening to birds sing, and cuddling with a stuffed animal are ways to invite peace and prayer into whatever we're experiencing, especially in these days when sometimes it feels like we're at home too much. I think Truman can relate. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. There he is. He lived with his Sarah, high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars, and the number 11 bus which traveled south. There's the bus, and there's Truman up in his window, where he lives with his Sarah. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anybody or anything. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. One day, Sarah ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow in her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero tortoises did. There they are eating breakfast. And there's the backpack that 32 tortoises could fit inside, but none did. Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish. Two more than usual. She kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, be brave. Then she left. Not to worry, she'd left before and she always returned. But this time, that backpack was particularly big and Sarah looked particularly pensive and that banana and that bow and 
let's not forget about those two extra beans. I think Truman is worried. Have you ever worried before? That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. There's the bus. There's Truman up in their window. This time without his Sarah. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited and waited. A thousand hours, tortoise hours that is, until he could wait no longer. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 South, even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. even if it seemed impossible. That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks that had always been there before. Oh boy, he ran right into the side of his house, didn't he? But there are those three rocks. ordinary rocks that now seemed extraordinary. Hmm, wonder what he's gonna do with those rocks. Is that what you thought he was gonna do? Oh boy. Truman also noticed for the first time, the arm of the couch and the pillow propped just right and that tall, tall boot, and the rug. You see Truman, Truman, excuse me, traveling on the arm of the couch and the pillow and over the boot and onto the rug. That endless rug Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Truly unsettling. You see the safety pen there? And the angry faces on those toys and the truck. I might be feeling unsettled too. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. Which, which way was south anyway? Oh, that window is way up there now. You can't see anything. Now the sun hung low, like Truman's head and heart. Just then, hmm. and then, vroom, screech, whish, up floors and under doors, Truman heard it, the sound of a bus. It was time, time to catch the number 11 South amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking, yet standing there in that ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive. The sounds of that bus are very familiar, aren't they?
Truman also felt brave. I wonder when you felt brave like Truman. But just as Truman was about to slip under the door, through that opening, barely the size of a tortoise, Oh, do you see it? There's Truman. Who else do we see? Sarah. She spotted him shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. Hey. They're so excited to see each other, aren't they? Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and tucked him back safely in his tank where he was peaceful and pensive and proud. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. Now Truman knew that one day soon, he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts. together. And that's the storybook of Truman. I don't know about you, but this story reminds me just a little bit how God shows up for us and we show up for each other even when we're not looking. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. I hope you'll come back soon so that we can read another story together. Until then, goodbye friends.